So these are kind of a definition of um, kinematics, questions for 2D kinematics. So um, let me just work through these quickly. So um, it, uh, this question, it describes the position of a particle that's changing. So uh, let me kind of sketch it out. So if you are imagining an axis, so this is my x-axis, y-axis. Um, let me just mark one, two, three, four. By the way, you don't have to draw these when you're doing these questions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So um, I just like to sketch it out to make sure that there's a solid conceptual picture as I answer these questions. And I, you know, I guess I do recommend that you draw them, even though you don't have to. Uh, so this is uh, going to be a way to indicate my initial uh, displacement vector, R1, and my uh, second displacement vector, R2. It'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, you know, minus 4 for the x component, and then 3 for um, y component. It'll be here, minus 4, 3. And this is the representation of my R2 vector, the second um, displacement vector. And um, it asks, so what is the particle's displacement? As in starting from here, going to there, what does that look like? So it actually, uh, once you're drawing it, it's a super uh, intuitive. You just draw a line segment from here to where you are ending. And this is your delta r displacement vector. And I guess what that means is if you do the head to tail method of adding, uh, this is the vector where if you do r1 plus the delta r, that'll give you r2. Or solving for delta r, that's your final position minus r1. I just moved this over with a change of sign, algebra. Uh, so here, all you have to do is that R2 minus R1. And um, you can do it component by component. So, you know, 4 minus uh, minus 4. So it's 4 plus 4, 8. And 6.5 minus 3, uh, 3.5. And that will be it. Well, what is the particle? Well, <laughs> I wrote down correct expression and did the wrong thing. <laughs> That's right gotta slow down. R2 minus R1. So R2 minus R1 minus 4 minus 4. So minus 8. Um, and then 3 minus 6.5. So minus 3.5. Uh, there's a joke about sign errors that a good physicist is uh, one who makes even number of sign errors. Meaning it's kind of common. Um, so but everything here is fine. Nothing here needs to change. It's just that I plug in the numbers wrong. <laughs> Okay, that's 5-1. Uh, next one is, I think, a 5-2. Um, it says something that yeah, I think I need to draw from scratch. So I have an airplane that apparently can do a, a short takeoff. If it, wait, is it a vertical takeoff plane? I don't know. Um, well, uh, so if, uh, if an airplane does a vertical takeoff, to some 20 meters, let me call this delta x1, um, above ground, this is my ground, and then follows a flight path angled at some angle theta, uh, uh, so I need a ground reference, and then it's going to be going off at some angle, 29 degrees, with respect to ground for 18.5 kilometers. Um, this is not drawn to scale. It asks, uh, what is the final displacement in meters? Let me do a bit of a, um, an approximation. I'm noticing just how small this 20 meters is compared to 18 kilometers. So I have a suspicion that if I made this approximation and just uh, ignored the vertical takeoff distance altogether, and just to calculate the answers for, well, um, the takeoff distance, it was so um, so short, so I'm just gonna do this calculation. Uh, I think that'll still give me an answer that'll be graded as correct. Now, there is a, a bit of an ambiguity here. The 18.5 kilometers, I'm not 100% sure if it's meant to be this horizontal distance of 18.5 kilometers 
or if it's meant to be this hypotenuse distance of 18.5 kilometers. Um, let me calculate the answer assuming this is what they meant. And if it says it's wrong, I'll do it this way. And then if they still say it's wrong, then I'll just go back to the original exact expression and do it from there. So, um, so the way to do this, do this is you draw the triangle. And whenever you are dealing with uh, x and y components and distances of x and y components, I recommend you draw the triangle. That's the way to make sure that you don't uh, make any mistaken identifications, that you just have things down right. So with this triangle, I can use 18.5 for the hypotenuse. Then um, for this uh, x and y components of uh, displacement, I'm looking for this side, which would be opposite to the angle, and this side, which should be adjacent to the angle. And you remember the mnemonic, so, ka, toa, taught in trigonometry, <laughs> which is short for sine of an angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, and, and so on. Let me just write down the cosine. Cosine of theta is the adjacent, A, over the hypotenuse and the tangent I don't think we'll need it this time so uh, you solve each of these for the opposite and adjacent and that will give you an expression for it when you do you get opposite side should be hypotenuse times the sine theta so let me calculate that here so um, the hypotenuse I'm gonna do everything in kilometers and then convert to meters by multiplying by 1000 18.5 times sine of, and the CAG math only takes angles in radians, so I'm going to have to convert 29 degrees into radians by multiplying it by pi divided by, actually I the numerical approximation, divided by 180. So this factor will convert that degrees into radians, so calculate the numerical answer, 8.969 kilometers, so 8.969 meters. Wait, sorry, that's opposite. Uh, 8969 meters. That's the, um, the Y component of motion. Again, I've ignored that 20 meters, uh, which I think is going to be fine. If it says it's wrong, let me just add that in and then see. Um, so um, the, for, the, uh, for the X component, it's again, to go through the similar consideration, it'll be um, this expression solving for the adjacent side. That'll be hypotenuse times cosine theta. So hypotenuse, 18.5 times cosine of the same thing. And I get answer of 16.180 uh, kilometers. So 16.180. Uh, that's common at point. Uh, so I've converted to meters. Let's see if, uh, see if it says it's correct. If it's not, then um, yeah, it says it's correct. And if you had added it in this 20 meters, it would still say it's correct. Just that, um, you know, again, it grades based on tolerances, 1% tolerance. So that 20 meters, it's within 1% of the overall value. So um, it, it, whether it's there or not, doesn't matter. It'll be graded as correct either way. Okay, so I have one more question here. Let me just uh, wrap that up. 5-4. Uh, so this question says, a cyclist rides, uh, let me just start sketching that. So I'm going to work with this uh, cardinal directions. I'll just say this plus x is also my east. And um, this plus y is also my north. So it says a cyclist rides uh, five kilometers due east. And then 10 kilometer, 20 degrees west of north. Okay, so this is northward, so 20 degrees west of, um, like 10 kilometers. And again, this is not drawn to uh, scale. Um, from this point, she writes 10 kilometers due west. Um, what is the final displacement from where the cyclist started? Okay, good. So the 
um, since they are asking for the final answer in terms of the eastern and the northern components, so I'll break these motions down into components and add them that way. So for two of the segments, it's super simple. They are already in east to west direction, so I don't have to change anything. Um, it's uh, this part where I need to break it down. So let me just uh, write it a little bit bigger and uh, have the uh, right illustration. So again, I recommend that you draw a triangle. This is the angle you are given. So um, you are going some direct, some distance in the western direction. Uh, from the expression that we worked out before, this will be um, the hypotenuse or 10 kilometers. Um, yeah, hypotenuse times the sine theta. Um, and uh, let me put in a minus sign so that I don't forget as I add this. And this is also supposed to be minus 10. And this is the adjacent side of the angle. So it'll be uh, the hypotenuse again times cosine theta. And this is really why I always recommend that you draw the triangles. Because you see how here sine and cosine. Because um, this is what you might call delta y. And this is what you might call delta x. And if you build this habit of always assign, uh, always associating sine and cosine with either x or y, half the time you'll be right, half the time you'll be wrong. Like this will be the one half of the time and a lot of people will miss that. But if you draw the triangle, then um, you will be right 100% of the time. So I recommend you to draw triangles, uh, illustrate where the angle is, and based, go by based on your uh, memory of Soka Toa, uh, how the different sides relate to the angle and the trig function. So I think I can do the rest of the calculation just in the calculator. So for the uh, x or eastern component, uh, I'm adding these three contributions, 5 plus, um, and then the contribution from here. So that will be minus 10 times the sine of the angle, 20 converted to radians, and pi divided by 180 uh, plus the final contribution minus 10. So that'll give me my x component of contribution minus 8.4 kilometers. Uh, let me actually do the three significant figures minus 8.42. I could probably get away with 8.4, but just to be on the safe side. The y component is going to be, um, so these two contributions will be zero. So I just need this contribution. That will be 10 times cosine of the angle, 20 degrees converted to radians, um, 9.3 round up, so 9.40. 9.40. Okay, so this will be 